Hello everyone, my name is Josh Willis and I'm an Applications Engineer here at Aero Electronics. And I'm going to be going over everything you need to know about the Thor 96 board, also called the HMI board, which is based on the IMX8M. We'll take a look at this board, explore its main features, and then go over the installation in detail so that you can be up and running in no time. For me, when I'm getting started with a board like this one, the most important thing is to have patience. It can be a steep learning curve, so take your time with it. What I like about this board is its unique feature set. From Zigbee to dual displays to an A2B interface, you won't find another board like it. The Thor 96 board is powered by Linear with an LT8642, ADP5014, and ADM3054, which deliver a low noise, high efficiency power solution. The Thor 96 board is powerful in its own right, but it can also take advantage of a broad ecosystem of 96 mezzanine boards that include a wireless and PoE board based on analog devices and other aero line card technologies. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we're working with. Inside the box, we will have the board, which will come with an SD card pre-installed, which has the firmware and demos already loaded onto it. Before we go into the installation, I wanna show you the key features that make this board so amazing. It has an IMX8M SOC, which contains four A53 cores for advanced applications, as well as an M0 core for low power processing. Dual band Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.2 with mesh support, and it also has Zigbee and thread support. It has the SD card, two gigabytes of RAM, the 96 board expansion headers, as well as an A2B and HDMI interface from analog devices. Now that we've reviewed the features, let's get it up and running. Some common things you'll need to get started with the board are the 96 board power supply, two monitors with HDMI cables, a keyboard and mouse, as well as a debug cable, which is a USB to UART cable. We've created a custom end on this one to connect it to this debug header. To boot the board, make sure the SD card has been inserted, all cables are attached, and then plug in the power and press the reset button. You then will see the green light turn on, as well as the debug messages on your host PC. Here on the host PC, we've launched TerraTerm at 115.200 baud to show the debug terminal. Once the board boots, you will see the login and we will log in with the root user, no password needed. And now we've successfully booted the board. Some common problems that you may run into during the installation might be the monitors not working correctly. Ensure that you've enabled the correct monitor setup in device tree and that you're using a supported monitor. Another thing to check is that your firmware is up to date. Refer to the user's manual for a link to the latest image. If you're still having trouble, please visit the support form at 96boards.org for further help. Today we're going to be doing a demo showing multiple displays. This is one of the unique features of this board. I'll quickly show you how to enable and demonstrate the use of multiple displays. First, we're gonna set it up for a single display. We'll do this by rebooting the board. We then halt the boot process by pressing a key in the terminal. We then will set our environment variable with the FDT file fsl-imx8mq-thor96.dtb. Uh, we will then save the environment and boot. Once the board boots, you'll see the GUI on the monitor and we can test it by playing a video file that I've already loaded onto this board. We'll copy some of the commands from the user's guide because they're really long. When copying the command, make note of the path of the video file. In this case, we're using a file called video.mp4 in the home directory. We will then paste that in and hit enter. And at this point, you should see the video playing on the monitor. Now we'll do another video test, but this time with two separate videos. We will launch the two commands in sequence. Again, we'll copy them out of the user's guide. 
In this case, we're gonna use the video.mp4, the same as last time, as well as the second one that I've named video2. We will paste the first command and then enter and see the first video playing. We will then go back and copy the second command. Paste it and hit enter. And then you'll see the second video playing on the other monitor. And now we've successfully demonstrated using dual displays. On behalf of Aero Electronics, I'd like to thank you for purchasing our Thor 96 board, and we'll see you next time.